All right, welcome Cajuns, Kuyans, and Connoisseurs. Today we've got a tasty topic to talk about. Boudin. What is it? Where'd it come from? And most importantly, how do I get me some? I'm your host, the Rainy Cajun, and I'll be joined today by our mischievous little Cajun Boudreaux. He comes in every now and then. Hey there, buddy. I think he was responsible for my promo snafu earlier in the week. And then someone who's quickly becoming a regular here on the podcast, Cousin David. David brings a particular expertise to the topic of Boudin, and I can't wait to get chatting with him. So let's get this thing rolling. All right, so first and foremost, what is Boudin? Well, simply put, it looks like a sausage link, one that can be used in any number of ways. Inside this link is pork, meat goodness, spices, parsley, and a smattering of other flavors. The end result is a taste that's like no other. It's quickly become a popular food in the South and parts beyond where many of us expats live. Heck, just uh, last month we had a Cajun festival up here in Seattle and one dude was online talking about flipping tables if there wasn't any boudin. I mean, come on, geez, really? That's a little extreme, but make no mistake, us folks from South Louisiana, we take our food seriously. Now, there are literally dozens of videos on the internet talking about boudin, mostly eating it, but this upcoming clip from the folks at Bayou Wild TV provided us with a snapshot into what goes into actually making boudin at a classic together get-together event called the Boucherie. So let's get that clip rolling. We're here at White Oak Estate and Gardens. Chef John Foles' is a state where chefs from around the world come to celebrate the hog. And they're here. Not only is it gonna grow, but I think it's needed in, in Louisiana for the professionals as well as those who just wanna come eat a good stew. You hear some sizzle? Some sizzle? What do we have? This is your sausage right here. So this is the andouille. And it's stuffed in a cow casing, number 44 casing. And it's a traditional type of sausage uh, and for the andouille to be in that big casing. Okay. For me, it was to find out where your food comes from. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to know the whole process. And for people that want to eat better food, they should know where their food's coming from. But you have to realize that you're going to use that animal uh, to bless uh, people eating and uh, we're not gonna waste a piece of that animal. I mean, from the snoot to the tutor is gonna be used. We found the man, David Hubble, faithful Bayou Wild follower. This is your fifth boucherie. That's right. So how did a man from Alabama get all over here to Baton Rouge and get involved in this? Well, my family's all from Louisiana and uh, when my daughters were born, I got more interested in learning about keeping up the food traditions and history traditions. I've always been interested in our uh, genealogy. And so uh, one of the greatest sources I ever came across was the John Foles Encyclopedia of Cajun and Creole Cuisine. I'm no stranger to making sausage. <laughs> How do you loop it? Help! <laughs> but I'm certainly no expert. So what better way to learn about a boucherie tradition than get my hands dirty and make some boudin? We've got the, the, the pork meat and the uh, liver that we're grinding up with this fine grind. And after we grind it all up, we're gonna mix in some fresh green onions and some uh, parsley. And then at that point, we can add whether we wanna do rice or without rice, and also the blood that we shaved earlier. Teamwork make the mean work. Uh, it's, it's been great because you see a mix, especially with John's boucheries. He's got people from up north from all over and he always talks about the seven nations so he also tries to incorporate the different nationalities into the boucherie. Continuing the culinary traditions passed down for centuries. All right now joining me back on the rainy Cajun <laughs> and the star of the, that little clip there is cousin David from Mobile, Alabama. David, it is great to have you back. Uh, it's actually kind of funny. You and I, uh, 
it, it, this was this week was planned a little bit more. I, I would say effectively. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Help! I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know we. We uh, we we planned a little bit on this one, and um, fortunately, we got a lot of we got a lot of people behind us uh, that were helping out with this show, which was really awesome. I mean, uh, the Bayou Wild folks, you know, having them uh, contribute uh, right there at the at the uh, the last minute. I mean, literally, I was talking to them yesterday afternoon, <laughs> and I got the graphics overnight. So uh, we got it, we got it working, which was awesome. But um, anyway, it's good to have you back. Good to be back. Can you hear me no. fine? Yeah. No? <laughs> um, yeah, I can hear you just fine. Um, so we just saw the clip from John Fulce's uh, Boucherie. And uh, there's a lot to take in there. And it's much more than the boudin component. Um I had to edit it for content because <laughs> there was some stuff in there. I was like, uh, I don't know if I should put this on or not. But uh, you know, th- th- there's some squeamish people that probably could have take couldn't have taken some of this stuff on there. But um, for the purposes of the show today, uh, tell us about the boudin making at the boucherie. Well, uh, you know, the boucherie, as you probably already explained, was it's a communal get together of when before we had refrigeration. And they would right. slaughter a, a pig or hog, and uh, many of the families would take place uh, working together. And from that standpoint, we would do different things with the different meats. You had your big cuts, your ribs, your roast, and then you had uh, your specialty cuts, the hams and such. But then oftentimes you had all these other parts that were not as, uh, not to say not desired, but they were more along the lines of tougher or maybe a little fattier, a little yeah. gristle. And so they wanted to come up with something to do because back then we didn't want to waste anything. And so with that, you came up with your sausages and your stews. Right. And um, and boudin being one of these type of products. And so boudin, uh, as you kind of explained earlier, is a sausage. But it's actually what's different from that versus other sausages is that it's really pre-cooked before you stuff it in the casing. Right. So it's seasoned, and most of the sausage you get will be what they call like a, a raw sausage or smoked sausage where it's actually cooked in the casing. So that, that way the casing's crisp. Right. Um, but what you have with boudin is that uh, unless you cook it a certain way, if you just get it the traditional method, it's going to be – you're going to cut that casing off. And so right. at the boucherie that uh, Chef False has, he's got several tables set up. So we demonstrate the different type of uh, – things you would do at a traditional boucherie. So you'd have the andouille sausage, you'd right. have the hogshead cheese, which we can talk about in the future episode too, if you want to do that. Uh, <laughs> um, backbone stew, uh, yep. cracklins or gratons, as yep. we call it in Louisiana. Uh, and then many other, like there's about six or eight different um, tables. And so what we do is at those tables is you come along and we'll demonstrate the methods of putting this together. And actually, in this episode, I didn't mention it to you, but our cousin Danny was actually there visiting Boucherie that year. Oh, no so kidding. A lot of that firsthand. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, but what Chef does for you, the traditional way it's done, it's an all-day affair, and it takes a lot of work. Um, and so you're up early on a Saturday. It's cold winter months. Yeah. And uh, everybody in the family is working together. And so you cut the pieces up. Well, Chef, being uh, very experienced with all this and wanting to make sure you get the overall lesson, you, the things are pretty much prepped from the standpoint of the meat's cut up for you, your veggies are cut up for you, your oh. uh, casing's clean for you. Um, and so the thing, they do actually slaughter a, a hog that day. And so well, it's very respectful. Um, in fact, he's made it a point from the very beginning to uh, always start with a prayer. And for the last, uh, I think, four or five years that we've done it, the, uh, the Bishop of Baton Rouge is actually there to lead that uh, butcher's prayer. No kidding. So we'll do a prayer. Yeah, so he has a prayer. It's very solemn. And um, once we get started, 
they all collect the uh, the blood from right. the, uh, the, the hog, and then uh, that'll be used in some of the other dishes. And then they'll start doing where they'll shave the hair off the hog and skin it. Not, well, not right. skin it per se, but shave it basically because that's where you, your cracklings are going to come from, your skins it, and your pork. Exactly. And such. Yeah. So they they have one demonstration of that going on. And typically in the old days, you would have a um, what do you call a a experienced butcher in the community and so we have experienced butchers that come there they break down the animal and then the rest of the tables are using um set up uh, like i said pre-cut meats that we all put together and make the various stews and the sausages and the gratons. so so the the hog that slaughtered that day is that is used later on or is uh like the meats from it because you said the meats are already prepared so is there you know a, yeah, a pre pre prep prep type thing or how to yeah there's some pre prep that uh, they do there um but yeah they don't waste any of that that hog either a lot of that's sure. broken down oh the other thing and it's probably not a um traditional louisiana boucherie dish but there's something called porchetta and it's more from the Italian influences. And it's a pork okay. belly where you take like the pork, uh, what do you call the, uh, the uh, butt, a boneless butt. You put it in a scored pork belly and it's got Italian herbs and onions and you roll it together, you sew it up and you, you cook all that together and you get this real crispy skin on the outside. Yeah. And you cut into it and it's like butter. I mean, it is one of the best things I've ever eaten. And so, so the, 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 the pork butt is the same as a shoulder, right? So that's the, when you're doing yeah, pulled pork sandwiches, that right, kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. It's some, it's a similar, I think one's in the front, one's in the back or something like that, Yeah. but it's the same type of meat, right? Uh, the same kind of sort of toughness. So, right. um, but yeah, that all, it's all gets used, uh, and it goes to, uh, the other part of the boucherie, including the demonstration is that if you visit, uh, and get a ticket, you end up getting fed. And that's one of the highlights. We go from like eight to 12. The dishes have to be in by noon. And meanwhile, they take our dishes plus some of the others that they've prepared. And they usually have maybe a hundred people that can attend uh, at uh, White Oak Estate and Gardens in Baton Rouge. Right. And from there, uh, you get a, if, if you leave hungry, it's your own fault. <laughs> I was in basically a pork coma for the next <laughs> four hours <laughs> so it, it, it's a quite an experience well it looks like one i mean it looks like a uh i mean before yeah. in the past it seemed like it was a tradition amongst families in a community and they would come together this you know being that we're it's much easier to get to people from around the region you know this becomes a regional event it's not just you know local families getting together um but have you noticed any changes over what the five or so that you've attended so far? As far as, uh, I mean, like attendance and, and, and the types oh, yeah. of people that are coming. The, most of it, would, uh, the people that it, it appeals to is, uh, folks like you and I, uh, yeah. who our families had the tradition at some point, but you know, grandma and grandpa growing up in Metairie, we, they didn't have, hogs in the backyard or anything <laughs> and so, we had so, squirrels yeah, yeah squirrels i think right by chickens way before we were born somebody told me oh. but, um the uh that tradition has disappeared yeah and so uh what john is doing is to bring all that back and so those of us who either heard of it or curious or just like good food have that opportunity to see it and so you right. have that that same kind of demographic that that attends uh, and the age ages vary. I mean, it's from the young all the way up to the, the very old who are trying to recall and, and have an experience with it. Oh. Now, early on, somebody kind of uh, on social media, someone made a comment. Well, this is, this looked like it was too fun. The boucherie is much harder work than that. And, you know, quite honestly, if you're going to an event like this, you don't necessarily want to go and just see the drudgery of it. Right, exactly. <laughs> Especially if you're paying to go. <laughs> right, right. It's, yeah. And I mean, uh, White Oak Estate and Chef John Foles, is, uh, he'll give you a wonderful experience and wonderful food. And yeah. you'll learn a lot. 
I mean, there's a lot of booklets that you get a free booklet with it mm -hmm. that has the recipes that we use, a little history in the front. Um, so you can stay there all day and explore the grounds and talk to them. It and, looked like uh, a pretty big, you know, I don't know, estate's the right word, but it looked pretty big. Well, it's about 30 uh, acres in general. It's a big house. It kind of looks like a replica of Homer's house. Actually. Oh, okay. It was built okay. in like the late 70s. Uh, but it's, it's, it's like a venue now for weddings and um, what you call like business meetings and such. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's a really nice place. In fact, um, I think it was called one of those movies, Bayou Bad A's, uh, with uh, Danny Glover. I think the second one was actually filmed at that at that house. Oh, okay. You know, you never. It's I. Well, that's a whole nother discussion we can table for after the the show. <laughs> right. Just the the portrayance of the uh, Louisiana, the Gulf South, but specifically Southern Louisiana in the movies has been. Quite pathetic over the years. I don't think I've uh, encountered one that I've really respected. And uh, right. well, don't get me started on the Big Easy. But um, the uh, all right. So, but th these days, there's a place that's described as the boon capital of uh, the world that self-prescribed. And apparently, there were three other cities or two other cities that were vying for this capital <clears throat> of Budan. Um, and uh, it ended up being this place just west of Lafayette called Scott, right? Now, I was looking this up because uh, Louisiana has some interesting names for towns. You've got Scott, and you've got Robert, <laughs> right? And then you've got things like Lafayette and Opelousas, and, and you know, and uh, there's just a whole smattering of cultures just embodied in the names, right? Right. But this one, you know, it says, uh, according to the Wikipedia, uh, it was named after J.B. Scott, who was a superintendent of the Southern Pacific Railways. Um, he was the terminal uh, superintendent, uh, and, and I guess Scott was the, uh, the gateway to the West. Um, if you look at the history... There was some uh, entrepreneur who opened up like a Western style saloon in Scott and uh, to attract businessmen and, and whatnot. But this is where the fairs ended from the east routes. And then from Scott onward, you were on Western fairs. Um, Interesting. But, you know, looking at the, the census uh, data, there's still only about 8,000 people that live in Scott. You know, it's a, it's still a pretty small town. I, I mean, I would almost venture to say, although they probably take issue with this, is that it's kind of a suburb of Lafayette, you know? Right. I mean, that's I had to look it up and figure out where it was. We went out there 2008. Yeah. I was, I was trying to figure out where it was. I was like, oh, it's right next to Lafayette. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it is. I mean, th there are more, what do they call them, boudiniers? Is that that it's, it yeah. sounds? <laughs> I mean, it, it's an official title, right? But um, right. Yeah. there are more boudiniers per capita in the small town of Scott, small city. Sorry, they are a city yeah. um, of Scott that uh, that in, that exist in the entire state, and I'm guessing just by its very nature in the entire world. Um, so, you know, the it's it's just interesting to me that this this what you know, started as a Western style saloon is now the Budan capital of the United States and, and quite literally the world. I mean, who right. knew? <laughs> um, you know, when, uh, when you think about it, Cajuns were a resourceful bunch. They, uh, they took advantage of every resource the land had to offer in Southern Louisiana. Um, but family was a core and there was nothing more symbolic of families coming together as a community than the boucherie. Right. And uh, Boudin being a product of the boucherie is a clear nod to the history of the early settlers and how modern day families continue those age old traditions. Um, and that's, you know, I mean, that's that's the what Scott is really. I mean, if you think about it, it's Boudin is is an element of the boucherie. But, um, you know, Scott has turned it into a. A business and the fact that people <laughs> were 
we're you know talking about flipping tables if there wasn't boudin at this festival i was like okay well let's let's keep our passion in check guys um but you know i get it i get it after trying it um because i don't think i really ate it that much growing up yeah i was gonna ask you when did you really start eating it last year yes (laughs) (laughs) i only laugh because of the fact that my uh i had tried it i think when i was younger and then when my brother-in-law was moving away, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, yeah. he had some in his freezer that he bought and somewhere in, this was up in Washington County, just above where I live here. Mm-hmm. And so he had a bunch of stuff, so we didn't want it to go to waste. So I took it home and I tried it and it was pretty good, but yeah. it wasn't like earth shattering. Right. So I, I started asking some of the folks I was talking to on the Vashery, there's a website. And some uh, distant cousin said, well, you need to go to Best Stop and Scott. Yeah. And about a year later, we made that trip to uh, Tabasco and, and to the uh, New Iberia area. Yep. And so we ended up um, visiting Scott, my brother-in-law, Charlie, and I drove out there and went to the Best Stop. And I mean, it, and I don't know what it's like now because I hadn't been in, a, in what is it, 16 years or so. But it okay. is, uh, it was an old, like, not even a circle K, just an old store. Yeah. And you walked in, but it was all these like stuffed pork chop, pork chop stuffed with um, sausages, uh, cracklings, yeah. eggs, gratons. Um, then they had the, the boudin, which I ran to and I got. And then I saw something that caught my eye and it was the smoked boudin. Yeah. I like, hmm, I'm going to try that. Described over pecan wood, smoked over pecan wood. Yeah. And, uh, and when I had that, it was like, that's what boudin is supposed to be. Like yeah, that. I mean that's that's a game changer. I mean, for me personally, you know, yeah. just the 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 flavoring of boudin is it, it, it without it being smoked is is just fine. But that smoked, like you were saying prior to the show, and my kitchen smells like smoke right now, like pecan smoke. You know, because I yeah. we we both cooked some food before the show, you know, started. Um, speaking of which, so. You you cooked up some smoked boudin from Best Stop today, and yep. how did you prepare it, and how are you eating it? So that's that's been kind of a funny controversy because at work in Alabama, as especially as Rouse's has come out this way, yeah, uh, there's been better quality boudin to try, and so some of the guys up the plant that I work at, they've had a, a we have one or two fellows who actually had uh, spent some time played for LSU and such. And so they'll, they'll, they'll tease each other because they'll talk about putting it on the grill. But the traditional way that you would do the boudin is to either poach it in a, in like a little boiling, uh, not even boiling, maybe 140 degrees water. Yeah. Um, just so you heat the inside of it. Because if you boil it, you split that case and then you end up with some type of boudin soup. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> and then, or a lot of times that what you'll find is they just steam it. And so what I've done over the years is I'll try to steam it. Now, another um, acceptable traditional way is to simply like put it in the oven and let it cook. And then when you do it that way, actually the, the casing gets crispy and you mm-hmm. can actually eat it. Uh, so a lot of people will, they have prepared a lot of different ways. It depends on how traditional you want to be. Sure. Uh, I mean, to me, the main thing is the goodness that's inside. Yeah, yeah. So if, if somebody, uh, yeah, it, if you, it depends on how traditional you want to be. Like I said, a lot of people will just, they'll go to Scott's, I mean, they'll go to uh, Best Stop or Don's out there and they'll just get a link and they'll sit in the back of their uh, pickup truck yep. and just cut it off and just squeeze the content squeeze it down. Out. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Um, so that, I prefer to cut it apart and eat it in a, in a plate myself. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You're a little more civilized. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how did you how did you cook yours? Uh, so I did mine in the air fryer, um, because I'm too lazy to fire up my grill, and you know get that going. Because then I would smell like smoke. Plus that I have you know the boudin. So um, I got to say that you know one of the best investments we've we've made as a family uh, in in the past year has been this air fryer. It just cooks all kinds of different things. And one of the things that it does with the boudin, as opposed to steaming it, is that it does crisp up that the the, uh, the, the casing. And um, so I eat it 
whole. There's nothing left. I mean, there's it. It just that's just the you know. I, I don't know. I, I I thought about it as like, okay, I can, you know, cut it open and then spread it on some French bread, like a, almost like a pate type thing. But, but yeah, I mean, this is, uh, this is mine. And, uh, well, let's see here. Get the focus. There is a focus. So, you know, um, got mine. Uh, hold on. come up a little bit. The there you go. Oh, yeah, okay. So yeah, it's always the opposite of what you're thinking when you're yeah. <laughs> when you're doing this camera stuff. But yeah, all right. So, and we both have the same boudin. We both have best stop smoke boudin. Um, right. And uh, for those of you curious about where to get that, um, I do have links in the uh, the the podcast footer notes uh, as well. You know, so you can if you want to go, like they sell it on Amazon. You know, so if you're not in the Gulf South, or if you're not up here, of course, Alta's here in, uh, in, uh, uh, Kent, just outside of Seattle does have the, uh, the smoke boudin and, uh, they just released their, um, gumbo today or yesterday, which uses the smoke boudin, which is a gumbo with the, the boudin in it. So anyway, um, there's lots of ways to get it now. And, and I think best stop, uh, I actually had, some of their egg rolls in the freezer too. And I was like, you know, I could go for that. And then I thought, uh, eh, no, I, I need something like a hearty, you know, the, the, the egg rolls look good, but I, you know, one of the things I want to, I want to try that, that I, um, haven't been able to do yet is like the, uh, like the egg rolls with like a pepper jelly look like, really good i mean that you know because you know when you go to like an asian restaurant you'll get kind of that that sweet sauce a sweet chili sauce or whatever um usually with egg rolls but you know you, b basically you it, it's something that you know it it enhances the flavor of the boudin and um and i, I you said you'd mentioned or you had mentioned that you were doing the um uh, the the pepper jelly with the egg yeah. rolls. Um, how did you make that pepper jelly? Um, there's an old recipe from a uh, plantation cookbook, is what it's called. But I grow my own Tabasco peppers, and you only need like a pot uh, okay. size. And so I'll make that uh, with some red bell pepper and uh, cider vinegar and uh, pectin. And just I've been my aunt uh, on my mom's side. She's been making it for years, and so uh, when I had my little jelly business for a while, I was making that. Yeah. Um, so uh, that was one of the things that uh, comes out as a nice orange color, and it goes really well with the, the, the boudin uh, egg rolls. And I had actually made that. And in fact, actually, you got to go back and give credit to, uh, as we were talking about Bayou Wild, Chris LeCocq, yeah. because Chris actually had bought some of the uh, uh, pepper jelly from me on his way to visit family. And he sent me some pictures where they had actually made the uh, boudin egg rolls and done the same thing. And oh, okay. I found a recipe in one of the, uh, like cooking, one of the Louisiana magazines, food magazines that had a recipe. So at the time I had some of my homemade boudin and mm -hmm. I uh, made our own egg rolls with it. And it was, it was other than the wrappers, it was, I guess it was pretty much all from scratch for that particular meal. Right. Uh, I liked it. Uh, the family, other than my youngest daughter, are not as fond about boudin as I am. My my uh, my technical uh, advisor here is saying that she lost her stream. Go ahead and refresh. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I wonder if you need to post on Facebook. Yeah, about I did post a new one on Facebook, so it might be a new link. Sorry for those of you out there that were following us. Um, we. Uh, when we when we dropped the feed, um, it had to create a new feed. So if you were tuned in before, um, you're probably going to have to go out of Facebook or out of YouTube and come back in, and then the the link should work for you. So I apologize for that, and you're probably hearing it after you already figured that out. But <laughs> um, I just realized I'll start sharing it to, to a bunch of different pages. Yeah, I can see it. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to have to figure that one out. Um, I thought I had everything uh, 
uh, you know, I thought I had it all figured out, but of course I didn't. Um, all right. Well, so this, you know, this go ahead, we're just going to go ahead and wrap the live stream. Um, you know, we, we, uh, I want to get into a little bit more detail with you, a little bit more nitty gritty. Um, but I did actually, you know what? I had your video from when you cook the boudin, and let me put that on real quick. This was, um, this was you. You have this up on YouTube, right? right. Okay. Right. So this was uh, how you prepared. Is this how you prepared at this time as well? No, this is the this is the poached one I did. It's a poached. A okay. Ago. Um, so just using their, there were, uh, instructions on there to simply, like I said, it's, once you get this product, it is so easy to use because it's all there. And it's actually right. the, as we've mentioned earlier, boudin is already cooked. Right. Uh, although there's so many different recipes, I will say that there is a couple that I have seen where you just simply, they, they stuff it, uh, raw. And then they poach it. But okay. Most of the recipes. Um, so like we talked last week about Vachery in St. James Parish, uh, rice and boudin has actually, it's more of a 20th century thing. When the rice industry came along, right. boudin, as you mentioned, goes way back uh, to France, but when it was originally in Louisiana, it did not contain any rice. And so our cousins out there, they still eat the boudin with out rice. As right. The traditional way. Right. And so you got that. And then the other thing is that you have uh, the two types, the boudin blanc, which is the white one that we have, or you can have a, it's either called boudin rouge or boudin noir. Yep. Which is blood boudin. With the blood. Yeah. 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 And so what you'll find is that if you want to get that type, you have to go to, uh, I notice I'm freezing there. You look like you froze too. No, okay. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> I I don't know what's going on. It's like it's Halloween, so who knows what happened? You know, spirits. Yeah, the (laughs) the spirits, spirits of the old Boucherie are like, no, you're getting us wrong. This is the real history, you know. (laughs) But the but so with the the Boudin Rouge, you can actually get it at a couple places. Uh, A friend of mine in Vashery sells it at his. It's called Le Bon Boucan, and it is very minerally as you would expect it to be. That was kind of the thing. You didn't want to waste any of that. Right. That's what they would do is to, to get some of that. So, yeah, those are the parts that you kept out of the uh, the little trailer there. Yeah, that, that, there was a reason for that. But, all right, well, they can you know. out online, too. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we can post links to that, and, and I'm, I'm planning on doing that. Um, so what we'll do, just so in case we encounter any more hiccups <laughs> we're gonna transition now now this is something that we're gonna start this week um well as long as david and i are on together we can go off on tangents and talk for quite a long time um it's it's amazing that we went decades without really talking to each other at all and then all of a sudden it's like okay now we got to catch up you know, and and we share a lot of similar interests. Um, so this uh, this will be um, on Apple Podcasts. We've already got one up there right now. If you look up Rainy Cajun on Apple Podcasts, we're there. Um, and then once uh, we are uh, done with this, the the main feed, what we're doing right now, we'll transition over to that. And that'll be something that's not live. It'll be posted later in the day, just so you know. So um, thanks for bearing with us with all the little technical issues today. And that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, I think it's probably high time that we eat some uh, boudin and, uh, and, and enjoy the fruits of our, uh, or somebody else's labor. <laughs> <laughs> we just heated it, but um, all right. Well, let me uh, close up real quick here. All right. All right. Thanks for joining us uh, in this uh, wildly technically challenging episode of The Rainy Cajun. Uh, I'm really happy you tuned in, um, and I speak for David and myself. We're, we're thankful that you're joining us. So whether you're watching live or on the stuttered replay, please hit the like button. 
and hit the subscribe button. And that will help us do a better job when we go down the road, knowing that people appreciate the content uh, hiccups and all. So uh, finally, a special thank you to Bayou Wild TV for letting us use their footage. Um, that was incredibly generous of them, and we appreciate their uh, their ability to work with us. So until next week, have a good one, and we'll see you again real soon. All right, say bye, Boudreaux. Hey! All right. Take care, everybody. <laughs>